Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the story of Stray and its robotic dystopian future. This puzzle-themed adventure game is fairly unique in that its central protagonist isn't human or robot, but rather a stray cat, hence the title. This cat finds itself lost in an underground city, where no trace of humanity is to be found. So, what makes this creepy cyberpunk world tick? Where are the humans? And can we find a way to help our kitty companion back to the surface? Answers to those questions and more await in today's video. So sit back, relax, and let's uncover the sinister mysteries of Stray. This is the story of Stray Explained. Our feline friend is first introduced on a stormy night as they snuggle down with the rest of their cat's family. These cats live above a dried out sewer channel, which has seemingly been abandoned by humans and overtaken by mother nature, now completely overgrown with flora. The next morning, in the wake of the storm, the family of cats leave the safety of their home to scavenge for food, but along the way, tragedy strikes. While leaping to a rather precarious water pipe, our cat loses their footing and falls into the sewer channel below, sliding down into a dark precipice. The rest of their tribe can only watch as the cat loses their grip and plummets into the unknown depths of the rubbish dump beneath. Miraculously, the cat survives. Shaken and injured from the fall, they press on through a recently opened door. But why did this long sealed entranceway open up now? Who is controlling the system? The doorway leads into the streets of a city shrouded in darkness, the only light emanating from neon signs that flicker on and off as we pass by. Some of these signs spell out messages such as, help. These streets are worryingly quiet, not a soul in sight. However, we do encounter a single robot that has been torn in half and momentarily blinks to life. Every now and then we catch glimpse of strange bug-like creatures scuttling about in the shadows. And before long, our kitty companion runs into these cycloptic creatures head first and discovers they are not friendly, despite their squidgy appearance. They are capable of tearing a living being, both man or beast, to shreds in mere moments, and so the cat makes a dash for safety as a horde of these flesh-eating bugs gives chase. Eventually reaching the safety of an apartment block, the cat begins to receive new directions on the many television screens found throughout this residence. These screens flash up different messages, prompting the cat to follow them. The messages lead the cat through the streets of this forgotten city and into a random apartment on the far side of town, where a new friend awaits. In the far corner of the apartment, a computer blinks to life and a mysterious messenger begins to relay instructions on screen. The messages read, Data corrupted, need help. Body required for download. Body required, enter the door, turn on, find body. At this point, an electronic door is opened leading to a secret lab area. In this lab, the cat activates a repair station which unlocks a secret room containing a chilling sight. The remains of a robot perched beside a large pod. Using the robot as a stepping stone, the cat manages to reach a high up shelf where an old companion drone called B-12 has been stored. The cat then carries B-12 to the repair station where the AI who has been communicating with us can now be transferred. B-12 springs to life as the AI uploads into its memory bank. At first, the cat is unsure of its new companion, but the two quickly develop a bond and trust is formed. B-12 then clarifies a few things about themselves and this world. They were trapped in the electronic network for many years, this allowing them to use the network to their advantage, spying through cameras and unlocking doors for the cat along the way. The city we find ourselves trapped within is known as the Dead City. However, B12 does not remember much about this world as their memory has been corrupted. For now, B12 tells the cat they must get out of here as the city is dangerous. 
After equipping the cat with a backpack used to digitize and store key items, the two leave the apartment and begin their quest into the great unknown of this cyberpunk world. Before long, the two explorers find their way into a new area of a city known as the slums. This is inhabited by a race of robots known as companions. At first, these nervous droids flee the streets, retreating into the safety of their homes, believing the cat to be one of the dangerous bug-like creatures that infest the now abandoned dead city. We learn that they refer to these parasites as Zerks. It's not long before a brave elder bot known as the Guardian realizes we come in peace and welcomes both Cat and B12 into the slums. B12 is multi-talented, capable of translating a new language created by the robots inhabiting the underground city. Therefore, we are able to listen to their conversations and communicate back, as well as deciphering the many signs and murals found throughout this world to gather additional details and solve important questions. While exploring the slums, many of the game's basic mysteries can be answered by simply digging around for clues. We learn, for example, that the humans did once live in this city alongside the companion bots. They are now referred to as the soft ones. The companion bots were first created as simple servants to the humans. They would cook, clean, and carry out menial tasks. However, at some point, the humans vanished, leaving only the robots behind. Over the years, the robots evolved using human evolution and social structures as a template. Their AI became self-aware and they developed the equivalent of a human soul, gaining their own thoughts and feelings, becoming capable of real conversation, artistic expression, relationships, and even corruption. They took both the best and worst traits of humanity and continued the work of the scientists that came before them. But also like the humans, they developed a class system, the poorer, lower-class citizens were relegated to the depths of the slums, while the more affluent robots made their way up to Midtown and lived a more luxurious lifestyle, their waste being siphoned down into the slums as if it were one big dumpster for the rich. This was the same structure in place when the humans were around, but what actually happened to them? B12 collects a postcard featuring a beach which reminds them of the outside. They feel they have been there before and recognize this is where their feline friend came from. They remember promising someone they would go there, but can't recall who. When showing this postcard of the outside world to the various denizens of the slums, none are too impressed. They don't believe such a place really exists. After all, they have never seen it for themselves and were only created after humanity began living in this underground city. To them, the outside is merely a concept or a myth. The Guardian informs us of a group of robots known as the Outsiders, who set out to search for a way to reach the outside world, believing it to be accessible. However, only one of these group members remains in the slums, a robot named Momo. It seems Momo is our best hope of finding a way back to the surface, and so we seek him out. Upon locating Momo's whereabouts, we find a deeply troubled and frustrated character. Momo has been trying to locate his fellow outsiders, Doc, Clementine, and Balthazar, who all disappeared during their quest to reach the outside world. Momo laments their absence and blames their pursuit of this dream for his newfound loneliness. For a long time, he has tried to contact them, but cannot due to his transceiver having no signal. Before setting off on their mission, the outsiders had taken notes about the outside world. By collecting up each and every book and handing them into Momo, he is inspired to continue his work and locate his lost friends after discovering the transceiver can be repaired. Momo points B12 and the cat up a treacherous route through the dead city, a path infested by swarms of hungry Zerk monsters. At the top of this path stands a signal tower, and once the transceiver is fixed to this tower, communication outside of the slums will become possible, and with it, a chance to re-establish comms with Momo's lost teammates. 
Over the course of the following few chapters, we learn a great deal about those pesky bloodsuckers, the Zerks. Information collected up by B12 causes them to recall memories of a company called Necocorp. This R&D company created a bacteria that would help break down the massive amounts of waste being filtered down into the slums. This bacteria would break down all the trash sent down to the lower levels in a bid to keep the streets clean. Unfortunately, after the humans went away and over the years that followed, this bacteria evolved into larger organisms, now known as Zerks by the robot inhabitants. These creatures are able to rip through both metal and bone with ease and strip a robot or cat in seconds. After activating the signal tower and repairing a transmitter device with the help of Doc's son Seamus, we are able to establish contact with Doc, who hides out in a closed off Zerk infested area of the city. Upon finding Doc, we discover he has been working on a device to combat the Zerk, a light ray gun which fries the foul creatures due to their aversion to bright light. After helping the Doc power up his new creation, B12 manages to digitise it so the duo can carry the gun around and fight back against any would-be predators. The three team up and escape back into the slums where Seamus and his father Doc are reunited. This sequence showcases just how far the AI in these robots has evolved, to the point where they think and feel just like the humans that created them hundreds of years earlier. From here we travel into the sewer system. Doc has invented a tool to combat the Zerk, but the key to reaching the outside world seems to lie with the other members of the Outsiders, Balthazar and Clementine. Momo takes the cat as far as he can and leaves the rest of the journey in their paws. The sewer snakes deep down into the ground where we discover it was used by humans to once funnel and recycle water and distribute it around the city. The Zerks have continued to evolve in this place and their bacterial roots can be seen everywhere. Eggs hatching, eyes bulging from masses of flesh fixed to the wall, the Zerks have evolved into one giant organism, a hive mind found in the darkness of these tunnels. Upon entering the core of this hive, the cat is attacked by a group of Zerks, forcing B12 to overload the light ray on his back in a bid to defend his feline friend. This fries the little drone, causing him to power down. As the stray cat composes themselves, they quickly snatch up B12 in their mouth and make a mad dash for the exit, a flood of Zerk in hot pursuit. But the nimble cat manages to escape the sewer as the door seals shut behind them. Cat manages to waken B12 and once powered up, the two emerge from the sewers and come across a vast tree-like village, built around an old pillar known as Ant Village. Here, robots live high above the junk piled down below, and among the residents, we find Balthazar. Before reaching the next member of the Outsiders, B12 recalls another memory, upon stumbling across a pod very similar to the one found in his lab near the beginning of our adventure. Up to this point, when discovering certain scenes such as this robot fishing, B12 would recall that he used to be a robot working for a scientist. A scientist who enjoyed, among other things, fishing. Up to this point, we assumed B12 was the AI transferred from the robot found beside the pod in this room. However, B12's latest memory upon seeing this pod awakens a horrifying truth. He was not the robot's helper, but rather the scientist himself. His body still contained within this pod back at the lab, and his mind transferred into the network during the downfall of humanity. After transferring his consciousness to the network, the scientist became trapped and had no way to go back, living on as a ghost in the machine. For hundreds of years trapped inside a digital prison, where he stayed sane by learning the robot language as it developed around him. Realising his family and friends are all long gone, B12 decides to turn his attention on helping his cat companion and the evolved robots reach the surface. First stop, Balthazar, who we find hooked up to a vast array of computer screens in a zen-like state. While it is clear that Balthazar's journey to the outside has ended, he implores us to discover the whereabouts of a final member of the Outsiders, Clementine. 
She is the one robot who may have the means and connections to help us reach the surface and already has a plan in place to do so. To locate her, Balthazar provides us with a picture of the two of them taken long ago. On the reverse of this photograph is an address, the location Midtown. And so the duo set off once more, with a new destination in mind and a new acquaintance to make. They climb the Great Ant Village and head through the subway station into Midtown. Midtown is where the middle class humans once lived and work, their waste flowing down from the Neko Corp factory into the slums below. Hundreds of years later, the bots have continued this tradition and the bright neon-lit city streets are full of hustle and bustle. A range of different shops, from closed stores to eateries, are fully functional. There are even bars and a nightclub, and overlooking the town, a high-security prison. Any suspicious or law-breaking robots find themselves locked away in this creepy establishment. Policing the streets are drones equipped with electroshock rifles known as the Sentinels. As B-12 recalls, these were initially designed by the humans to keep the streets safe and the people in line. However, over the years, as the people of the city rose up against their oppressive lawmakers and corporations who held control, these Sentinels were used for more nefarious purposes. To keep everyone in line and obedient no matter the circumstance. They are now used by a police unit known as the Peacemakers to make sure no robots step out of line. Clementine is currently hiding from both the police and Sentinels in an apartment block uptown. Upon sneaking into her apartment, Clementine is untrusting, but quickly warms to the duo after seeing the photograph from her old friend Balthazar. In order for her plan to reach the outside to work, Clementine informs us we need to take the subway train to the upper levels. Unfortunately, said train is powered down, and only an atomic battery found deep within the high security confines of a local necro factory will get it running again. Clementine gives the cat and B12 a contact on the streets, someone who she trusts to sneak them into the factory. This contact is a streetwise bot called Blazer, and upon passing him Clementine's note, he, true to his word, sneaks the two inside. After navigating the Sentinel patrolled factory and snagging one atomic battery, the cat and B12 return to Clementine's apartment block, only to discover she is now missing and the entire place is locked down by local police. A note left by Clementine reveals that she has gone to hide out in the local nightclub with Blazer. Upon making it inside this club, we discover Blazer is a snitch, and has turned in both Clementine and Team Cat to make a little money. The Sentinels swoop in and stun our cat's companion, then everything turns black. Awakening inside the local prison, the cat manages to break free from their cage and locate Clementine, who directs them to a set of nearby keys, allowing her to also break free. However, communication is now key, as B12 has been taken and so the cat no longer has a translator to rely on. This prison is a terrible place, where disobedient robots are tortured and have their memories slowly wiped, until they revert to the soulless creations they originated from, their souls and humanity stripped once more. While exploring the prison, the pair stumble across B-12, contained within an electronic cell, where his mind is being probed for answers. The cats cannot leave without their newfound friend, and coaxes Clementine into helping break him free. Stealthily sneaking like only a cat can, they manage to free B-12. The three outsiders then make their way through the halls of a prison, and manage to break out before their minds are wiped. Clementine steals a truck and races through the city streets to get B12 and his cat companion back to the subway before the Sentinels track them down. She says farewell, remaining hopeful that this newest found member of the Outsiders can complete the mission she failed. A mission to bring the outside world to those trapped within the confines of this city. Speeding off into the distance, our duo are left with only one option – to power up the subway system and take the train to the surface. Our journey is near its end. 
Cat and B12 have arrived at their destination, the highest point of the underground city, where those with money, power and control would reside and make choices that affected every living human beneath. Here we see the original companion bot designs, those who never had the chance to evolve into something more human. They continue to perform the tasks they were set by the humans in years past. Only one thing now stands in the way of the cat's freedom, a sealed door leading to the surface. To open this door, B12 must override a series of high security computer systems located in the nearby control room. It is in this room that B12 recalls exactly why there are no humans left alive, and the full circumstances of their tragic demise. Throughout our journey, B12 recalls memories of his past human life, and we can piece these together to form a full story by the game's closure. Hundreds of years earlier, a catastrophe took place on Earth. This caused the Earth's surface to become unlivable, and so, until it had time to heal and become safe once more, the humans built a vast underground city to hunker down in. They created plants which didn't require sunlight to supply breathable air, and recycled water in a vast sewer system to sustain themselves. Life continued on, with the lower classes oppressed more and more, as resources ran down and panic spread. Eventually, a plague broke out and began to wipe out every last denizen of the city, even those hiding away at the top level. The only survivors were the companion bots the humans had built to help out, who grew more and more sentient over time. Oh, and a certain scientist who had transferred his consciousness into the electric network so that he may pass on human history to those who survived. Now B12 is the last surviving human, existing only inside the body of this droid. As B12 begins to override the door lock, he is gradually attacked by the network's security protocols. He urges the cat to carry him to the final override so he may complete his work. After doing this, B12 states that he no longer needs to survive, as he can now see that the world will be just fine without human influence. The robots continued the work started by the humans, and for better or worse, have inherited their traits, evolving into thinking, feeling beings who can now rebuild the world anew. He thanks the cat for being such a good companion and faithful friend before passing on. With his final action, B12 opens both the door leading to the surface as well as the city roof, flooding the streets of this once dark and dank civilization with bright sunlight. The robots finally understand there is indeed a world beyond their city, and the introduction of sunlight eliminates the Zerk infestation and brings safety and peace to the residents of this city. A new chapter in a post-human world can now begin. Cat stays with B12 for a while before finally heading to the surface. It's time to say goodbye to this robotic world and reunite with their cat clan. But as the cat looks back at the tunnel leading into the depths of a lost city, a single screen sparks to life, as if someone familiar is living on inside the network. And with that, we have come to the end of this video and a look at the story of Stray. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. And if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.